<laughs> okay, we will begin the webinar right now. I'm Zach. I'm actually from the admission team from Duke NUS Medical School. So right beside me, there are actually two NUS engineering students, Anand and Titi. So they will be actually sharing their uh, experience and also why they actually took out this special track. So before they share their experience, I will actually mention about this track and also the MD program, the medical program that we are actually offering. So I will go ahead now. Okay, so as everyone know, we, we are a medical school. So we are the only graduate medical school in Singapore. So what is a graduate program, uh, medic, graduate medical school means? So for graduate medical schools, we only accept students who actually graduate from their first degree. So they must have at least a degree to enter into the program. So why are we offering this track? This special track is actually offered to high school students, A-level, IB diploma, or, or diploma students who actually trying to enter into engineering pathway in NUS uh, before joining our MD program after they graduate. So for this track, I mean, what are the benefits that the students can get is uh, during the four years of uh, their engineering degree program, we are, will already start to uh, engage them to get to give them the exposure uh, of the medical healthcare uh, industry. So after they are being accepted into this pathway, right, and with the engagement, it's not compulsory that they will need to commit themselves uh, after they graduate from the engineering pathway to enter into our medical school. So let's say during the four years of engagement, they find that um, this is not what is suitable for them, then they can actually choose to opt out. But if they want to continue uh, with this track, they have to actually uh, attain some of the entry requirement, uh, like the MCAT scores and the GPA to actually enter into the pathway. Okay, I see some questions. There's no slides and there will not be video. So this will be a recorded uh, webinar and you'll be sent to NUS for them to disseminate again. So if you have any questions on later, you can actually check, uh, type your questions then we will try to uh, answer all your questions. That's okay, but it's not on. Okay, so, Okay, I have shared the the medicine track and I mean the engineering and medicine track. So maybe right now I will get Caesar to share her experience and why uh she actually chose this track. Okay, Caesar. Hello everyone, my name is Si Chi and I'm studying uh, computer engineering in NUS. I'm in year two. So I applied to Duke NUS because I wanted to try to study something before I studied medicine, because you know how it goes when you go into medicine and then like maybe the next 10 years of your life is decided and you are just in that path. So it was quite a daunting thought for me. So I thought, why not I go and explore different pathways that can also contribute to healthcare. And then with the new perspectives that I have gained and the new skills that I've learned, I can, um, provide a different, uh, I can come and help healthcare in a different angle because healthcare is a very cross disciplinary field. And because the problems that we're facing today are so complex, so it really requires um, skills from different fields to really solve a complex problem. Yeah, so that is a short introduction of myself. I'll let Anand introduce himself too. Uh, hey guys, uh, I'm Anand. Uh, I'm from uh, NUS. Uh, I'm in year one and I'm studying uh, chemical and biomolecular engineering. So I hope everyone's not too bummed about uh, the open house being an EO open house with the virus issue going on. Uh, but anyway, so I first heard about this uh, NUS engineering and medicine track when I came for NUS open day in 2017. And uh, it was actually the first year that they launched this program. So when I came for open day, I, I went for the talk and I was pretty intrigued by it because I never thought that you know, engineering and medicine could have so much to do together. But after going for the talk, I realized that engineering does have a lot, you know, to offer to medicine, 
and with you know all these diseases nowadays and you know the growing healthcare field i think that um going forward being a clinician won't be enough uh, to um you know to contribute as much to the healthcare sector and i think that coming up with new technology and new um how you say um technology to help the uh, healthcare field will be so much uh will be able to contribute to the field much better and that's why that drew me into this program because I was always into, you know, the sciences in, in uh, primary school, secondary school, and, you know, junior college, uh, chemistry, physics. But I thought that this course would, you know, be better tailored to me, that I would first uh, experience, like, the engineering side of, of, of medicine before, you know, coming to grad school. So that's a bit, you know, that's a, that's a sort of an introduction to, to myself. Um, now, I think, should we take questions or? Okay, so I see a lot of questions coming in, so so we'll try to 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 work on those. Is the recommended IB grade? Okay, so for the recommended IB grade, right? Okay, for this, uh, it will be actually under the NUS side because uh, when you take up this track, right? So there will be a assessment for all the grades if you actually apply for this track. So when you are trying to apply, there will be a special pathway track for you to click on. So you, then you have to submit whatever documents that's required. So after submission, right, the N NUS admission site will actually assess. And if you are being selected, uh, you will be invited for an interview. Then they will actually go through the interview to see whether you are the right candidate. Because for this pathway, there are limited slots. So it's around 10 to 15 per year. So I hope I have answered the recommended IB grades. And the... Okay, does that mean I need to be a... I think... Okay, yeah. Okay, so I, I think I also answered the how many seats are available for this track. So this year is 10. So I think, I mean like average is 10 to 15. And we do receive uh, lots of applications. So out of all those applications, we will actually assess whether uh, the grades or be the overall is is, I mean, like the right candidate to to be entered into this program. So this the program and eight years program. For engineering, it will be four years. Then after you graduate from your engineering uh, from NUS, right? Then you will actually enter into this uh, med school, this post grad uh, med school which will take another four years. So yes, it's an AS program. So after the four years in the med school, you will actually do a one year of housemanship, which is the licensing to become a doctor, and then followed by the residency. So after you finish the housemanship, uh, you are already a licensed doctor to practice. So hello, would biomedical engineering students be in a more advantageous position then? The students from other engineering department. Um, yes and no. For the biomedical engineering, I mean, like they are actually at an equal stance. Be it uh, from the different side of the engineering or different different discipline of the engineering, because during these four years, we'll be engaging all the students who are actually in this track to to really expose them into the the industry and also the curriculum. So, I mean, for biomedical, they will be exposed to more science. Okay, um, so I'll just add a bit of input. So, like, when, when I was deciding which engineering to take, I was deciding between biomedical and chemical and biomolecular engineering, right? But then I chose chemical and biomolecular engineering because uh, as part of this program, we get to do the IDP, which is the Innovation and Design Program. So over there, there is a healthcare route, and I'll be starting, like, a biomedical project in year two, which will carry on to year three. So that's why I thought that I'd get my biomedical engineering exposure over there. So I wanted to, to be exposed to like the biomolecular side of engineering, uh, maybe the pharmaceutical route and all. So that's why I chose uh, biomolecular engineering instead of biomedical engineering. So I don't, um, this, this is not so much a, uh, as, as an advantage, uh, so as to say, but it's more of get, I, I wanted to be exposed to, to more types of engineering rather than you know, just be uh, fixed on fixed on one. So that so that's why I didn't choose biomedical engineering. Yeah. I can provide my perspective on why I chose computer engineering too. 
So when I first applied to NUS, I wasn't sure which engineering I wanted to go into. So I applied for common engineering. But however, I don't think there will be common engineering from this year onwards. But um, in the end, I went into computer engineering. And the reason was because I wanted to do something more technical. Whereas for biomedical engineering, you kind of learn like very broadly about each field, but perhaps you do not go in depth compared to the traditional engineering fields. Yeah, so that was why I chose computer engineering. I would not, okay, because I'm not um, part of the admission, so I would not be able to say if biomedical engineering students are more advantageous to enter into this track, but both Anand and I are not from biomedical engineering. So the next question. So if I'm on the track, I will study engineering. Okay, I think I've uh, covered this just now. So you will need to graduate from the NUS engineering track first. I mean the N NUS engineering degree first before you actually join the MD program, which is the postgrad program. So what was the cut off for this track last year? Cut off as in the grades or Okay, the grades, I do not have the statistic because uh, the it's all by the emission from NUS. So I can't answer you on that. Then, yes, no. <laughs> so just do your best and get the best result. Uh, will I only learn parts of medicine that is related to the field of engineering I'm going to pursue? Okay, so for the MD program, right, it will definitely be a uh, full med medical school that you will learn everything. So for the engineering part that you actually learn from the NUS, right, it's also a full engineering uh, path. So that uh, we do have a lot of engineering students, so they will normally use their knowledge and skill set that they acquire from the NUS uh, engineering path uh, to, to actually grow themselves as a future doctor while they're actually studying the MD program. Yeah, so to clarify, like no matter what engineering that you pursue, uh, you'll still, like the MD program will be the same for everyone. Uh, it, it won't be like differentiated according to your to your field of engineering, so. I think a misconception that many people have about this pathway is that it is a merge between engineering and medicine. Rather, it is um, a normal engineering bachelor's degree, and with that, you apply to a graduate school, which is Duke NUS Medicine. And the good thing about this pathway is that it kind of guarantees you a position in the graduate school already at this point in time when you're entering into your bachelor's degree, provided you you uh, meet the requirements. Um, that because uh, we do accept uh, international students. So if you're on this track, like what uh, Cecil has mentioned, that uh, if you manage to hit the requirement by this track, uh, you will not be competing among uh, those that apply directly with us, whose GPA might be like 3.9 out of 4 or 4 out of 4. So those kind of calibers. So you just have to maintain and meet all the criteria uh, that was set by NUS. So is that supposed to be an image or just pure? Okay, so this will be a pure audio uh, yeah, webinar. So there won't be any image or slides. Okay, does that mean I need to be an engineer student? If I'm wrong. Okay, so for, we have different tracks. So today, because it's a NUS e open house. So yes, you have to be an NUS engineering students. Uh, you have to apply, when you apply for the engineering, you have to apply at the same time the special track. So not apply to be an engineering student first. So when you're applying to NUS and you're applying to uh, the Faculty of Engineering, there would be like an option for you to choose whether you're also applying to the Duke NUS track. And at the same time, you also have to apply for to Duke NUS directly to submit your essay and your personal statement or something, and then they will invite you for an interview. Yes. Yeah. But if you are from different faculty, okay, if you are from different faculty, there's no current track in NUS, only engineering. I think to clarify, like, so this, this through train track where you do, where you're 
guarantee like a position in Duke anyways when you're just starting your undergrad. That's currently only for engineering. But if you're from a different faculty, after your undergraduate degree, so after three or four years, you can still apply to Duke anyways, but you won't be guaranteed that spot that engineers are. So if you're in this program, uh, you have to apply to engineering first and then you, you come on as, a, as an MD student. But the application of, uh, occurs at the same time. So when you apply to NUS for engineering, you have to select the option to also apply for this Duke NUS uh, engineering and medicine track. So, uh, but, so that's only for the engineering faculty. For other faculties, there's no through train as of yet. Yeah. So other faculty, right? You have to graduate first before you actually directly apply to Duke NUS. So normally students from other faculty will start they are preparing their documents during their year three or, or yeah, year three and year four. So to prepare for the direct application. Oh yeah, okay. There also has another track. So total there is actually five tracks currently. So we also do have the UNUS liberal arts track. So if you are under that UNUS, you can also apply for this these are uh, true train track. Okay, so how about A level grades? Okay, so for the grades, right, like, like I mentioned, it's all under NUS assessment. So NUS admission will actually assess all the application and then we will actually do the invitation for the for the interview day. So what sort of job engineer doctors end up in? Okay. We have various, like I mentioned, around 20% of our students are actually coming from engineering, who has an engineering background or degree. So normally they will still do the same thing. I mean, like they will still end up as a doctor. So there are some students or there are some graduate who, who are already a doctor are now practicing um, mainly family medicine and there's mix. So there's one graduate who is actually from the first batch has actually opened up her own business uh, who is doing the innovation. Uh, she's called Dr. Reina. So she has uh, come up with a lot of innovation from uh, her specialization in engineering. So all the skill set that she acquired from the, the bachelor in engineering is like being used uh, after she graduated from the MD program. So I think this is why a lot of students from engineering uh, would like to contribute to the medical healthcare sectors with their engineering background and knowledge. I'm a recipient of the e-scholars program. Will I be able to join this pathway with the e-scholar program? Okay. Yeah, I don't think that's an issue, but uh, please ask the NUS admission instead because I'm not very sure about this. E scholar program uh so the e scholars uh, if i remember cor correctly that's a three-year engineering program so you just do four years of engineering in three years and then after that you do a last year like in a master's in science so uh, i'm not sure whether um you're still eligible for this track because after your undergrad in, in in the in the duke nus course you come you do an md so there might be a few restrictions but i think you have to uh, check with nusi for that but, uh, yeah so can't really answer that. International students. Okay, we do accept international students, uh, but I'm not sure whether NUS side will accept that. For this pathway, okay, please refer to NUS admission team again uh, to check whether for international students they'll be actually accepting. Okay, are the grades required for this? Uh, straight A's, it will be the best. But like I mentioned, the assessment will be through NUS admission. So for Duke NUS, our side is to wait till the assessment by the NUS admission. Then we'll actually invite those that are being assessed and, and who are the right candidates for the interview. So how long is the residency? Is it as long? Okay, for the residency, like I mentioned, you have to you have to clear the one year of housemanship to get the license. So residency normally will take out four to five years, depending on the specialty or the yeah the specialization that actually you choose. So some specialization that you choose might not have the slots because each specialization will have a limited slots. So let's say if you choose radiology or neurology 
and that year, particular year that do not have enough slots for for all the students' application, then you actually start rotation in the hospital first. Yes, while waiting for the slot. The total length of the bond. Yes, okay. So for the bond is for Singaporean is four years. So for PR and international will be five years. So for that bond, uh it will start after you complete your housemanship of one year. So basically this bond is to guarantee a placement uh as a doctor in, in the hospital and also for the residency. So after that five four years for Singaporeans and five years for PR and international, you are actually free to go to other countries to, to practice as a doctor if you choose to. But from our statistic, I think only less than five percent live after the five year bond or four year bond. Yeah. So next question. What is the difference in the selection process between the Duke NUS engineering medicine track and the undergraduate medicine MBBS track? So for both um, applications, you have to uh, you have to submit your personal statement, and then if you're invited for interview, then you have to go through multiple stations of interview at the school. But the difference would be, of course, when you're applying to MBBS, you're applying to enter the school directly. Whereas if you apply for Duke NUS, they have they want to gauge whether you will be able to um, you you are interested in studying engineering as well as continuing your engineering um as well as continuing your education in uh, duke nus so i thought that when i went for the mbbs interview they were more um they were more interested in um the the medicine side of things like whether i whether i have whether i really want to um, care for patients whether i am really interested in studying like physiology um and like all the anatomy stuff whereas when i came for duke nus interview i thought they were more interested in like my research experience and why i wanted to study engineering and how do you how do i think i can contribute to medicine with my engineering education yeah i'll just add on a bit to that so for both selection processes both required personal statements and both required uh, teacher referees so that was a sim similarity but i thought there was a key difference in the interviews for the for the nus mbbs interviews it was it was MMIs, which was multiple mini interviews. So there's like like five stations of maybe five minutes each. Uh, and then within those five minutes, um, you have to answer questions posed by an interviewer or maybe interact with a, with a you know, like a actor patient, et cetera. But for the Duke and US, this, this uh, engineering and medicine track interviews, it was two 30 minute interviews. So you really get to develop a rapport with the interviewer and it's a much longer interview, interviewing process. So that was, I think, the key difference in the interviews for the um, selection process. Yep. Okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. A-level student, what grades? Okay, I, I think I mentioned this quite a few times already. So the grades, uh, to be frank, as good as possible, but it will still be under the assessment by the NUS admission team. Yeah, so I think your grades have to be decent enough. Uh, can't be too bad. Uh, but I think uh, once you get called for the interviews, uh, this is what the NUS uh, side told me, that once you get called for the interviews, your grades don't matter anymore. Everyone starts on the same plate. And then it depends on your performance in the interviews. So your grades are just to get you into the interview. And after that, it's it's up to your like your passion and your just your interview skills. Yeah. I'll we'll stop uh, taking questions about um, how, what is the academic caliber you need to get into this program because we cannot answer those kind of questions. So. Maybe we can move on to this is engineering for engineering. Okay, so for the uh, if if you're taking standard level maths and IB, can you still apply to engineering? That that depends on uh, NUS uh, whether NUS uh, uh, accepts uh, SL IB. You might have to take a few prerequisite courses, but I think you have to check the NUS website for that. Um, I mean, like when you apply for this track, right? The main thing is you have to be able to enter into engineering first, then followed by the the MD program. So if for the entry requirement to this track is mainly will still be under the engineering criteria first. So I hope I I mean I explained that well enough. Can I 
apply for the track while I'm studying in uni instead of okay, you can the track will only be available for those uh, high school students or A level students after they graduate and apply for the first degree first. So if you're already in the uni, then you have to wait till year four to actually apply directly with the NUS. So you will not enjoy the benefits of what uh, the true train track students are enjoying, like the seminars, prep. Uh, yeah, because uh, like as part of the, the engineering and medicine track, right? Like within your four years in NUS, while doing engineering, you do a lot of stuff with UK NUS also. Like for example, currently I'm doing a GMS 1000 module, which is a pre-medical module at UK NUS while also studying engineering at the same time. Then in year two and year three, we have pre-health experiential programs, we have clinical observerships. Uh, as if to do a second major in innovation and design with NUS. So there's a lot of other uh, um, requirements of the, of the whole uh, four-year course when you're doing engineering. So that's why you can't apply to it midway when you're studying in uni. So if you're already, if you're already in uni, uh, you have to wait for, you have to get a bachelor's degree first before applying to you can use um, after that. Well, what bachelor degree I must do at NUS or NTU to apply to do NUS master? Okay, so any degree is welcome to, to apply with us as at MBBS. So yes, any other degree. So must I apply to NUS first or do NUS? So if we are applying for the track, the engineering uh, medicine track or the UNUS track, uh, UNS medicine track, yes, you have to apply uh, to NUS first. So if you are already studying in the uni, then you will only be able to apply with us during the year four. So year four end, end of the sem, the last sem, then apply with us. So sorry, just, just to clarify, because I think it's, it's not been made clear earlier. So if you're applying to the engineering and medicine uh, track, with NUS and Duke NUS, on your NUS application form, you have to select an engineering faculty, first your engineering of your choice, and under extras, which will be slightly below in the form, if you, like under special programs, you select the Duke NUS engineering and medicine pathway. So you have to, like, you have to select both on your NUS application form, then you have to get into engineering first before you'll be called for your Duke NUS interviews. So it, it occurs simultaneously. I'll explain the three and four already. What other uni can you apply to do NUS medicine? Okay, so we we do have an NTU track this year. So that is for the science and psychology. And then we have SUTD track. Uh, yes, engineering medicine track also. And then there's a UNUS, SMU, SMU business track. SMU business and medicine track. Yeah, SUTD. So SUTD too. So these are the five tracks that we have currently. Yep. Okay, I have, I have addressed question six. Basically, it's just you apply to engineering first, and on the special programs, you indicate the engineering and medicine pathway uh, at Duke and US. So, yep. To graduate from this program, enter the engineering industry. Um, like any graduate programs, right? What or like any any educational pathway that you take, what you want to do. Uh, in the end, ultimately depends on you. There are engineering medicine students who um, continue to practice medicine. There are, there are people who do research. There are people who start up their own company. So, so, so what this program offers you is the exposure to both engineering and medicine and what you do in the end depends on you. Okay, I think the next, I think we have to move quite fast for his question. Uh, we'll graduate from how is the Duke NUS school different from the MBBS school? Okay, so basically for Duke NUS, uh, oh, okay. yeah, this um, Duke NUS is an MD program. It's a graduate medical school, and MBBS is a undergrad medical school. Okay. Maybe just, I add yeah. on a bit that because we uh, for Duke NUS we have a collaboration with Duke University from US, so we are actually adapting their curriculum, uh, which include a. Uh, so-called uh, scholarly program or research program in the year three out of the four years program. So that is the difference between uh, the postgrad school and the MBBS school, adding on to the, additionally to the requirements that we have. Yep. So is there a difference between the medicine program offered by 
Okay, so these I have. Yeah, so the one by Yong Lulin is a five-year program, whereas the one at uh, Duke NUS is a four-year program. And yeah. Yeah. This program, I think I've covered that already. So uh, the different tracks for the different university, the only way to enter. Uh, yes, if you are looking at the true train track, yes, these are the five uh, that I already mentioned. But if you are not taking up the true train, you can apply as a university graduate after you complete your first degree directly to Duke NUS. So you do not need to just take up this pathway. But if you take up this pathway, you will enjoy the benefits uh, that the students who are inside this pathway will get. So is there any added benefit if you do in NUS versus in Duke? I, I think it's more about exposure. So if you if you go the if you go to NUS engineering and medicine route and you do engineering first, you're just exposed to a whole new side of, of medicine, which is the technology side. And ultimately that I think that'll help you become a better doctor because you'll see like the areas for improvement in the medical field and I think you'll be able to contribute as a as a, as an engineer in, in in addition to being a clinician. But obviously if, if you if you want to focus on the patient care side of it and just solely the medicine side of it, then then the MBBS route may be better for you. But it, it ultimately it ultimately depends on what you want out of your education. But for me, I, I prefer the, the Duke and US route. And studying the bachelor. Uh, okay, so while you are taking up this track, if you are taking up this track, or if you never take up this track, I think the one most important uh, test that you have to take is actually the MCAT test, which is one of the requirements that uh, we will need even for the direct application or the true train track uh, yeah. students. So the MCAT test is actually a seven hours MCQ. Test based uh testing on the science, physics, chemistry, psychology, yeah, psychology and math. And like so, the, the MCAT is it's a is those who want to apply to Duke and US have to take it. It's an MD entrance exam test. And even if you're on the, if you're on the engineering and medicine track, you still have to take the MCAT. But your requirements are slightly lower. But you still have to take the, you still have to take the MCAT exam. It's a seven-hour exam. There are four components to it. Uh, I think the details can be found online, but it's it's generally just testing your sciences, your critical reasoning, and a, a bit of psychology. So it, it's a very long exam, and people normally take it in around year three, uh, year three, or and you can take it multiple times. So you can take it, in, if you don't do well, you can take it in year four again, and they'll just take your best score. So that's one of the criteria to get into, to get into, into Duke and US if you're not doing the track. Uh, if I apply medicine, medicine as my medicine. first choice and choose engineering as my second choice, will that jeopardize my application to do NUS? Um, no, that yeah. will not jeopardize. Uh, but like what Anand has mentioned earlier, if you you must be clear on what you really want. If you just want to be, become a clinician at a shorter route, I mean the MBBS will be the best option for you. But if you have interest in engineering and and wish that the engineering knowledge that you gain uh, within the four years in NUS can help out in your future career as a doctor, then I think that this track will be more suitable uh, compared to, to the MBBS route. For that, I actually put medicine as my first choice and engineering as my second choice, but still indicated my interest in Duke NUS. And then I got the Duke NUS interview and Duke NUS got back to me earlier than NUS medicine and then in the end I called to change my choice to engineering. Yeah, so I do not think that it will jeopardize your your chances of getting a Duke NUS. They look, okay, will they look more at my grades or more in on for the interview, interview? Okay, for if it's interview it will be you have already been chosen uh or after the assessment from NUS. So for an interview it we have mixed questions. It depends on the interviewer. So each interviewer have a different um, sets of criteria or, or sets of questions to ask. So it will not be longer uh, regarding your grades or your non-academic uh, achievement. So it's more about your personality and why you actually choose this program. Uh, so I think the, the grades are only considered to get, to get you an interview slot. 
and then once you're in the interview, like everything else will be will be um, looked at, at except your grades, because grades is just a, it's the is a, is a primary factor of getting the interview. But after that, they'll look at your non-academic aspects and uh, your CCAs, voluntary work, etc. So I think that's that'll be the main focus of the, of the interviews. Enroll for admission to Duke and US Medicine Track. Would we know if we are shortlisted for interview after we send the application in yeah. the same year? Yes, you will know during the same year. So like yeah. I mentioned, NUS will actually do the assessment first. Then we will actually invite the students for the interview, the selected uh, candidate for the interviews during the same year. So what's the difference <laughs> between NUS and Duke NUS? Okay, I think I mentioned this. I will like to emphasize again, Duke NUS is still under NUS, but we have a collaboration with Duke University from uh, US, uh, and our campus is actually located in SGH. So, yeah. and Duke NUS is purely a postgraduate medical school. Yes. Yeah, so and are. NUS has is this an undergraduate school, and it has every faculty. And uh, NUS also has postgraduate courses. It's just Duke NUS. Duke NUS is just a very specialized postgraduate medical school. There's not there's nothing else. Yeah, that's the. So it's not necessary. I think we have so the, the about, about the grades. It, it it's it obviously it'll be very beneficial to get good grades, and obviously the grades have to get you an interview slot. But uh, yeah, the, the, there's no specific criteria defined by the admissions office. It all, it depends on the caliber of the students applying that year. The next question: All engineering courses yes. from NUS are included in this track. Yes, you can apply to any engineering course and uh, for this track, and then. Uh, yeah, we'll see how the interview goes. And you, will all the 10 students get first? That's an addition. That's, I think I come later on, right? Is the lighting of their choice, uh, or do they compete with NTU and... Oh, okay, yes. So, I mean, like, all the 10 students will be treated the same as all the students, be it from the MBBS or the MD program. So that is the residency. I think you are asking about the residency. So like I mentioned, the, there will no, there will not be any like prioritizing of the schools uh, or medical schools uh, that they'll be given. It's by your performance during your four years of curriculum, be in the MBBS or the or the medical um, or the MD program. So it is not possible to apply for the strike at the end of undergraduate courses. Uh? Yes, you. It's still possible for you to apply. I mean, like at the end, at the end, the of, end of. Oh, okay. So you will not be able to apply for the track, but you are able to directly apply with that to NUS instead. Yeah. So this track is is for undergraduate engineering and then medicine. But if you're already in, in an undergrad program currently, then you have to wait till you get a bachelor's degree before applying to Duke NUS. Uh, so work in roles in MNC healthcare. Uh, yes, they are. So, so it depends on the on what are the direction that the individual from the engineering uh, field. I mean, those, those, okay, we won't call that engineer doctors. It's just that they have an engineering background, that they will still be a doctor or clinician. It's just that it depends on during the four years, what are the changes they've made or what are the, the mentality that they have made. Uh, after they graduate from the med schools. So they do have different pathways, be it going to the pharmaceutical uh, companies or most of them will actually practice as a doctor first to, to get hold of the, the so-called experience in the hospital to get know what is really happening. Then with their engineering uh, knowledge and background, right, then they can actually use that to, to improve the life or the, the particular issues that is happening in the particular department. Well, they will the students get well above the required admission score again in the program. Uh, I'm not sure whether they can they can they can say out their result, but I believe they yeah their score is quite good. So I mean not only just the score like Anand and uh, Sister mentioned, you have to the most important is actually the the interviews. So no matter how good your grades are, if you actually fill the interviews, you will not get into the ten slots that was assigned to this track so the interview is actually very important too yeah and i think there's another reason we, we can't really say the scores for our year because every year like 
like the like the T scores and and the grades will, will differ. Even the the scores of the applicants applying to this course, their their mean grades will differ. So, like like what I, what score I got doesn't won't really affect like the like the score required for this year. And as I said before, the scores it just it just has to get you an interview slot, and once you get an interview slot, and everything else matters. So yeah, just just make sure that your scores are hopefully are decent enough. If I want to apply it through Kitanius, what do I need to? Okay, so if you are actually applying with the UNUS uh, pathway, right? You it will be the same thing as the engineering pathway. So you have to apply to the UNUS program, selecting the the special track while you are actually applying for that particular program. Mm -hmm. So it's the same as the engineering track. So that is the totally different track, but yet you have to select that track under the UNUS. Mm -hmm. For application, we have to stay interest in the NUS admission for the engineering and medicine track and the Duke NUS Medical School itself. Yep. Uh, so on the NUS application form, you select an engineering degree, and then below that, under special programs, you'll have to select the Duke NUS um, engineering and medicine pathway. So I think this has been covered before. You have to apply to both schools at the same time. Then, if you get into NUS engineering, Duke NUS will consider your application and will send you an interview request accordingly. I've already answered. Yeah, that's done. You mentioned to check with admission. Why check with the NUS? Yes, check with the NUS admission, not the Duke NUS. Yeah, so for, for clarification on the admission process for the engineering part, do check with the NUS admissions team. Because, yeah, because, faculty of because you do have to, because NUS engineering still has to accept you as an undergrad student before Duke NUS can send you an invitation for the interviews. So you still have to get into engineering first. Yeah. This is the interview. Uh, international students, okay, like I mentioned, if you are international students, you still have to check with the NUS uh, admission team, not the Duke NUS. Yeah, because uh, like the through train, I think that will be determined by the NUS engineering side. So, no, you cannot apply for the through train track up if you are already an engineering and NUS engineering okay. students. So, what engineering costs? we have all covered. engineering courses yep. will be applicable for this track yep okay, okay is there any if you listen okay wait wait wait, wait. This, yeah i think this is covered then, does engineering have to be put as first or second choice that will depend on you uh whether, whether you like to whether engineering is your first choice. It depends. So if this if this track, if you want to, if, if this track, this engineering and medicine track is your first choice, or it's it's your it's your pri your primary choice for application, then then your engineering degree should be your first choice, and then under special programs you put Duke NUS. But if if it's not your first choice, then your first choice should be whatever course you want to pursue first. Yeah, okay. Study a year in Duke University. There's actually an exchange Study program year. in third year. Yeah. So there are limited slots also. I mean, every year we do send like two, two students over. So there is a, in the third year of, of the MD program, which is the third year of graduate medical school, there is an, there, there's a possibility to go to, go to Duke University for your research year. Because the third year of MD school is the, is the research year. Uh, there'll be like nine months of research. So there's, there's an option to go to Duke University to, to, to do your research year. But obviously this, it's, there's limited vacancies and, uh, they'll assess your viability for the position because it's it'll, it'll obviously be very popular. So. When I get a bachelor degree from any other uni outside of yeah. NUS, can I still apply for Duke NUS yeah. MD course? Yes, you can. So yeah. Can I apply for any program in another university and still apply for this route? Uh, yes, you can. So, like I mentioned, there is a SUTD route, there's a SMU route, and also there's an NTU route. So, you can actually visit our website, the Duke NUS website, to see the pre med uh, programs to find out more. So, when do you take MCAT? Depends individual. So, for students, normally we'll take in year three, year three of mm. the NUS engineering. Okay. Yeah, actually, you can take it anytime within your because MCAT is it, is it lifetime? Uh, MCAT will be three years. Okay, uh, so I, of expiry. I think so MCAT will... lasts for three years. So I think from year two, three, four, you can take it anytime, and also they'll take your best score. So if you don't do well the first time, I think you can take it again. 
Well, one thing to note is the MCAT, the MCAT is a seven hour exam. So I think it's, it's good to go in with like, only you should only take it if you're fully prepared because studying for it again is, is a very tedious process. So I'm uh, currently, I'm, I'm still in year one, so I'm, I'm looking through it in my year three summer. Um, yeah. For the MCAT, right, preparation is what is needed most. Yeah. So for year one, year two is the best time for you to prep, to get to know what the MCAT uh, test is about and also what are the structure that the MCAT test will actually uh, test you about. So you must have ample, uh, I mean, ample time to actually prepare for this test. If not, you definitely struggle during the test. So all this stage, I'm interested in doing medicine ultimately because my graduate, my grades, my okay. grades are less than straight grades. I want to try all possible way to get my medical degree. What would you recommend to do? I think uh, you should still apply. Like put your first choices as either if you if if you want to be a doctor, this it it really depends on on what uh, approach you want to take. So you either do the MBBS or the or the engineering and medicine route, but you should still put them as your top choices. Because even, even if you don't have straight A's, you still might get an interview call up. I said it's straight A's is not a, is not a compulsory thing. Uh, so it, it really depends on, on, on the on your batch and, and how they've performed. So I think if, if you want to get a medical degree, you should still put um, these choices as, as your first options and, and just hope that, you know, you get the interview call up. Because once you get the interview call up, it, it, like everything else matters. Even if you do not get uh, admitted to MBBS or the engineering medicine pathway, as long as you you can build up your portfolio during your bachelor's degree and then you can apply directly to graduate medical schools after you get your bachelor's degree. I didn't take MCAT last year and does that mean I should take MCAT this year and wait until next year for... Okay, yes, you should take the MCAT this year ASAP uh, for next year intake. Uh, we are opening up the application in this year, June. So do take your uh, MCAT ASAP and then apply during the June uh, application open. So is it okay to apply for engineering as third choice? Uh, it depends on individual, like I mentioned. Yeah, it's, it's okay, but it, you just have to like really see what you really want to do. So um, yeah, I think it is okay to put engineering as your third choice. MCAT is needed even yes. when, yes, MCAT yes. is. Uh, so even program. like us, we are in the through train program, but we still have to do our MCAT. And so, MD or MD PhD at the end, or I can choose. Okay, so if you are interested in the MD PhD, you can choose that while you are in the first year or second year. Yep. Would so you the, be able to provide an estimate of the school fees and are there yeah, any scholarship? Yes, these are all available on the website. These are on the website. It goes up every year, but yeah. So every year there will be changes. So there will be scholarship and uh, financial aid. So it's all written in the web website also. And uh, this is another great question. Is it easier to get in terms of any U.S. medicine? And my grades, we really don't know. It depends on the it really depends. Team. It really depends on on your interviews. So I think interviews are a key thing here. So once you, if you get decent enough grades, hopefully you get called for the interview. And then after that, it really depends on your performance of in your interviews, um, whether you get into either track. So scholarship, yes, I mentioned already. So we do have financial aid, which include scholarship, bursary, and also tuition fee loan by the banks. So these are the three choices. Normally, we'll give out more information if you are being selected. Uh, for the interviews, but we do have all the information on our website, so you can actually go, go to our website and check it out. How far is it to get into NTU double? NTU double man. Okay, NTU, the question is how competitive is it to get into the NTU double major to NUS track? Okay, so this, okay, it's not a double major, so you have to complete your, either your NTU or NUS degree first before entering into the NUS uh, medical program. So is there a minimum score required during school exam of the engineering studies to secure the position? Uh, I believe the the person in charge for this track will actually uh, monitor your yearly uh, result to make sure that you are you are aligned to the requirement. Yeah. So obviously, like the medicine course will be a very hard course, so you still need to maintain a a reasonably good cap, which is a cumulative cumulative grade point average. Uh, or GPA, as some of you might know that better. 
So you have to maintain a reasonably good GPA within your four years of engineering before you can first. Uh, so okay, okay, there's no strict uh, um, minimum GPA or whatsoever, but it has to be the term is reasonably good. Just make sure that you can cope up with your studies before entering medicine. So I think it's like yeah, like like the like the recommended good grades are like a 4.0 GPA and above. But obviously, you should you know try and do your best. So I get it. Approximately, how many students apply for this track? Uh, every year we have different numbers of applications, so the numbers is actually getting higher each year. So, like I say, there is only like ten to fifteen slots for this track. So, out of all the application, we will choose the N NUS. We actually assess and choose the candidate. Uh, it can be fifty to hundred. So, how many students apply for this track? Uh, can't really say for sure, but 50. I mean, at least 50 can go up to 100, but you know, there are 10 slots. Uh, five different tracks available again. Okay, so we do have the SUTD engineering track, we do have the UNUS uh, liberal track, and we have this NUS engineering and medicine track, and also the NTU track. And the SMU business track. Yeah, so there are five different tracks, but like the the track we're focusing on is the NUS engineering and medicine track. But there are other pathways to get into the NUS. And you, it's also ten. So there, are all out of all the five tracks, right? All five tracks there's so only ten ten slots for the track. So per track or per, per track. track. So per track is ten slots. Okay. So does the NUS medicine engineering pathway mean that you are doing a double? Uh, no, it does not. Uh, so doing this pathway, this means that you get a bachelor's in engineering first, and then you move on to graduate medical school where you do a master's in medicine. So and then you... Master in medicine, uh, okay, so not really master's in medicine. It's like an MD, right? It's MD, but it's still considered as a degree. So yes and no to the question that you'll be getting. But, but, one is like an undergraduate degree, yeah. one is a graduate degree. So yeah. it's not, you're not doing both degrees simultaneously. I think that's what this question was asking. It, it, it is yeah. really. We will also, okay, there will be a Duke University cert too. So uh, Duke University cert and uh, NUS cert. So, so yes. You, yeah, you get the uh, degree from both. It's a joint degree. Do we need to apply to Duke? Okay, so for this track, if you want to apply to this track, I think I've said this before. You on your NUS application form, you you have to apply to engineering first. Then you under special programs, you you indicate your interest in this engineering and medicine pathway at Duke NUS. So to get in for this track, you have to get into engineering first before you can be called for the Duke NUS interview. So it's it's on the NUS uh, application form, not on the Duke NUS website. The deadline to apply for the track nineteen. Yeah, because the deadline for yes. yes. Yes, because the deadline for the NUS application is 19 March, so by right, because if you get into NUS engineering first, the deadline for this track will also be 19 March. So. It's more or less competitive than NUS. Uh, yes, of course. I mean, like all the medical school is actually quite competitive with uh for the admission or the entry requirement. So yes. Yeah, or more or less competitive. I mean, it's about the same. Yeah, That's I mean. I and medicine is a very competitive field, so yeah. it's really hard to distinguish at this time. Uh, Are we allowed? allowed to apply for more than one of the oh. few NUS tracks? Right. For yeah. um, yes, you can actually apply for all the tracks if you want. It See, depends on because you are applying to tracks um, from the university itself, so you can apply to multiple universities, and you can uh, you can take the option for the NUS track. Sorry, this might be a little. I would like to ask about the NTU pathway. If I have already applied for the double degree program and have indicated interest for Duke and US NTU pathway, any yeah, other steps I should take? Okay, so if you have actually applied for the NTU pathway, right? I mean, the Duke and US NTU pathway, then all you have to do is wait for the admission team from NTU to actually notify you and wait for Duke and US to actually invite you for the interview. So if a graduate student from Singapore Polytechnic go for NUS engineering and medicine track, if a 
okay. if you're from SP, can okay, you? Yeah, so from, if you're from SP, yes, you are able to actually apply for the NUS engineering medicine track. Yeah. So can we do engineering at NTU and apply at, to do NUS school in the same year? Um, there won't be a NTU engineering uh, track. So you can only do your NTU engineering first after you graduate or during your last year, you can apply to do NUS trade. Yep, the engineering track is only for NUS. Currently, so, yes. Currently, yeah. Do we take the MCAT before or after we enroll into the special? It's after you enroll into the pathway, I think, uh, so year I think three. About year three, uh, of your, when you're doing an engineering degree and you're maybe a year three, you should start doing MCAT. So you, because the MCAT scores only last for three years, so you should consider doing it in year three or later year four. Okay, so to apply for the different pathway, I mentioned 10 per slot for each pathway. So where are the interviews? The interviews will normally, it depends, it depends on the year. So uh, do NUS will actually notify uh, NUS site to tell the candidates who are being selected. Okay, uh, okay, so uh, if medicine is selected as my first choice and engineering as my second choice, Will the option for the special part field still open up in the NUS application form? Yes, it will. So even if entering is your second choice under special forms, like under special parts, the Duke NUS option will still appear. So you can still choose that. So that, that, that won't be an issue uh, if you don't put it as your first choice. So it'll still appear. My passion is, My passion is in medical mm -hmm. healthcare, not in engineering. Is, there, is this a good route to take? No, I if you're yeah. just... Looking at the healthcare, please uh, apply for the MBBS. Yeah, if you're if you're into healthcare, there's there's no saying there's there's medicine straight, there's public health. So and this this course you're doing an undergraduate degree in medicine in, in engineering, which is four years of of intensive engineering at NUS. So if you if you if you're not if you're not passionate about engineering, then definitely you should not take this course because you if you, ultimately you'll be doing a bachelor's degree in engineering, which is four years of of time. So definitely no. Thank you. And it will be a total of engineering. So from all the engineering courses, yeah. there'll be 10, 10 slots total. Yeah. Yeah, a diploma from Duke University. There won't be a diploma, but there will be a certificate, graduate certificate. So does Duke NUS look at which university you are from for undergraduate study? Uh, no, we don't look at which university you are from. It depends on the overall package, uh, like your grades, your non academic uh, performance. Or that. So if you are the, you have the criteria, or if you hit the requirement, then we will definitely consider you as one of the candidates. I'm a polytechnic graduate and have no O level English score. Does that prerequisite require any sort of English grade? Uh, if you are able to enter into the NUS program, the NUS engineering program, then you are you are welcome to actually come apply for the the pathway track. Okay, so I think about the English score. So I. I... I think to get into NUS itself, there there are a few English like requirements, like at least a D and GP for A levels or etc. But if you don't, if I think the requirements for the English are on the web, are NUS website, but if you don't pass those, you can still get into NUS and then do this thing called a QET, which is a qualifying English test in NUS. So I think for the English requirements, that you have to check the you have to check the NUS website exactly for the details. But um, that shouldn't affect your application of this course that much. Are usually called for the interview for this track. It depends on the number of applications we receive each year. So it can be up to 20 to 30, it depends. So the do grades from polytechnic students matter for admission for a degree at NUS Engineering? Uh, this question I can't answer because it will be under the NUS admission. So they will be the one who actually assess whether your grades from the polytechnic is enough, is sufficient to enter into the program. Engineering is my second choice after medicine, reduce the chances of me going into medicine. It will not reduce your chances or, or jeopardize any anything. So it, it, you will receive the notification if you're actually being selected for the interview once again. Hmm. I think as of now, that's, that's all the questions we have. Um, I think just to wrap up, uh, there, there's a lot of questions on the grades. I don't think we can we can really like say too much about the grades because they change every year. But uh, just if if you've done decently well enough, you should, and you're interested in medicine, 
and you're interested in the strike, you should just put it, put it as your first choice and then uh, just hope that you get the interview call. And after that, it really depends on how you perform in the, in the interviews. And yeah, there's a lot of the nitty gritties on the application details, but basically for this track, you have to apply to any of the engineering first and then simultaneously indicate your interest in this pathway. Uh, Apparently this pathway is for students who want to study engineering and see a future in medicine. So only apply for this pathway if you want to study engineering because it's going to take four years of your time. Actually, ultimately, it will take eight years because engineering is a four-year degree and after that, uh, medicine is a four-year degree. So it will take a lot of passion and, you know, a lot of motivation and hard work. But I think that if you're really, like, interested in it and motivated about it and really have a passion for engineering and medicine, then I think this will be a good fit and I hope that um, you'll, you'll, you'll apply to this course and uh, see how it goes. Adding yeah. on, if you have any more questions regarding the application to this medicine track or engineering medicine track, please approach NUS admission team first. Uh, if you have any questions regarding the MD program or the curriculum from the MD, uh, you can actually drop us an email. Uh, you can go to our website to find the email and actually drop us an email to ask a question. But again, I need to emphasize application to this medicine engineering track. Please approach NUS. So thank you for the time for Anand and Titi. So I hope we actually clear all your questions. And this will be a recorded uh, webinar and will be actually put out in NUS website. So yeah, so if you've missed any questions or you can just uh, re rewatch the webinar and clarify or any other questions as as any. If not, we will just end the webinar. Yep. Okay, so thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Thank you.